BJP is going to be holding his three-day brainstorming meeting uh, starting today and tomorrow uh, over the weekend as well. Priyal, you know, uh, so far you only used to you used to an aggressive tone by Narendra Modi. Today was completely otherwise. But what's the BJP is likely to do? What's the strategy are they working on? Well, it will be interesting, Harsha, to see now after this fiesty uh, words that came in from uh, Rahul Gandhi, the first of its kind. Uh, but essentially, uh, they are clearly working on the economic resolution and the political resolution, which, like how the Congress did today, the BJP will be uh, sort of informing their cadres, the entire party workers that come to tomorrow for the two-day meet, where all the translation of what the party is looking to do will be uh, sort of conveyed to them for you know hit the round uh, hit the ground running uh, in terms of the strategy of bjp now as far as the economic resolution is concerned we've already been seeing whispers across different uh, you know bjp members when it comes to the tax reforms what is their view on dtc gst and issues like that uh, we have the fdi issue uh, we've heard narendra modi speaking earlier uh, this week in the fiki meet talking about manufacturing talking about skill development and employment employment generation is what they are uh, they are talking about but the concrete steps is something that we have to clearly watch out and you know given that none of the parties so far has really outlined what really are the policies or the agendas that are there in the forefront will they be waiting for the manifestos that will come about or is it something those indications is something uh, that they say will be coming in tomorrow in the next two days, especially as far as BJP is concerned, mm. uh, apart from just bashing UPA. Right. Uh, AKB, you know, uh, in the past couple of months, we saw a large part of corporate India, many financial investors saying that it's the BJP that's likely to come back to power. Uh, the momentum was clearly with Narendra Modi. Two things have happened. One is the rise of the AAP in Delhi. The other is, you know, uh, Congress getting its act together, at least grouping to get its act together. Uh, what do you think is the thinking at the BJP right now? How do you think they're going to be countering these challenges? would like to see uh, that what does BJP do with regard to, for example, on FDI and retail. Does it take a position uh, where uh, it says that, yes, FDI and retail is bad? Uh, so uh, as, uh, as the people of this country would like to, 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 to see what BJP stand is on FDI and retail. Uh, uh, on uh, BJP's position on the kind of tax reform that its former president uh, have, have mooted. Uh, I mean, some crazy ideas of replacing all kind of taxes with one bank transaction tax uh, has been mooted and uh, is believed to be under consideration. Uh, now, one would like to have clarity on, uh, on from BJP's economic resolution that uh, what kind of tax policy or tax reform, so to say, right. are going to be pursued by the BJP if it were to be elected to power. Mm. So, uh, and uh, a third point would be on the traditional, uh, the, the, the response to the, to the Congress challenge, so to say, uh, on the economic entitlement and empowerment policies. Uh, what is their response uh, and how they want to address uh, uh, the, the, the challenge uh, that uh, the Congress's policies in the last 10 years have thrown up mm. in, in, the, in the form of right to food, right to education, Aadhaar, the identity scheme, right. land acquisition law, uh, etc. So I think at, at three levels, one would like to understand what BJP is going to do through its economic resolution. Rajiv, come in on this. How are you reading the resurgence of the BJP being dented by the AAP uh, and now by the Congress? Uh, that's sort of trying to get it act together. Do you believe that the resurgence uh, or the BJP is going to go back to the drawing board and figure out areas where the AAP is trying to uh, steal a march? Oh, well, absolutely. The rise of the AAP and the, and, and the very unexpectedly good showing in Delhi has in some sense set the cat among the BJP pigeons, and which is a good thing in some sense because there was a great fear of complacency on part of the BJP because... They almost had taken the elections for granted, as it were. So it is very good. The, the rise of the AAP has also changed the e political idiom of the country. Uh, people are not going to be just doing a sort of charisma or uh, you know, sort of slogan-based campaigning any longer. They will have to uh, focus on the real issues. 
They will have to focus on a vision for this country. They'll have to focus on what their governance platform is going to be. Mm. I think the rise of AAP, therefore, in, in most senses, has been a good thing for the Indian, 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 Indian politics. Uh, coming to the fractured mandate, uh, I, the last three days have changed my view, actually. Uh, you know, and before that, I held a different view, and which is to say that I think AAP may have uh, bitten off more than it can chew. It might have done better to consolidate its rule and its governance in Delhi, uh, show us an example. There were other state elections going to follow suit. But, they, but in trying to cash in on their momentum, uh, you know, and to fight the national elections and 300 seats, etc., mm. maybe they will, in some sense, be spread too thinly. Mm. And to that extent, the, the damage that they will be able to do to the BJP's prospects mm. may not be as large as it could have been, uh, you know, about a week ago.